My name is Fraser Cartmel and I am the newest member of the team at the Global Triathlon Network. Global Triathlon Network, flavour phrase, LL Cool phrase, the Scottish man with the smoothest tan, are you crazy? I can't believe he's going to be on everyone's screens. It's just magic. It's magic. I recently finished my last race as an athlete, which happened to be in Mexico, an Ironman 70.3 event. And that brought to close a long spell of racing for me, which actually began back in 2001 as a junior, which if I'm honest, makes me feel pretty old. Hi, so the GTN finally have themselves a Scotch presenter. I never even got an interview. Never even got told about the job, to be honest. Me. Mm. What can I say? Nobody's going to understand his accent. Mm. Uh, yeah. Right, let's be honest, people will understand him a lot better than me. My pathway into the sport was ITU short course racing and I guess I got to a fairly decent level throughout my university years. Raced for Great Britain as a junior and then an under 23 at the likes of European and World Under 23 Championships. Did the odd few World Cups for Britain as a senior too. But I was under no illusions of how good I could really be and I was happy with the level I'd managed to get to. And I guess that's where middle and long course racing was able to fill the void for me, luckily. I did my first Ironman 70.3 event at the now defunct UK Wimbledon 70.3 in 2007 and managed to win it, which was a pretty good way to start, I guess. And I guess a decade on, if somebody had told me I'd win an Ironman multiple 70.3s, go to World 70.3 Champs and get a top 10, and go to Ironman Hawaii twice as a pro, I don't think I'd have believed them. So am I content with what I did in the sport? Absolutely. Would I like to have been better and win more? Yeah, everybody does. But I'm happy with where I'm leaving the sport. Right, so the wind's starting to pick up here and it's getting a little bit chilly, so I think it's time to find somewhere a little bit warmer. Ah, yes. Good, yeah, can I have a pint, please? Uh, yeah. You said you guys were working. Yeah, I'm retired now though. I really believe that my Scottishness has had a really large impact on the course my career's taken, the choices of races I've made, where I've gone to train, and really shaped, in my opinion, the career that I ended up having. Um, what do I think that Scottishness means? Well, I suppose it's been an ability to deal with unpredictable conditions, unfavorable weather, conditions and facilities that elsewhere in the world have seemed favourable, good, much easier, have undoubtedly meant it seemed like a walk in the park to me compared to what I grew up with and was generally used to at home in Scotland. And good examples of this for me have been races where you've got you know, rough road surfaces, hilly technical terrain, where the weather's been really pretty bad, cold water, wind, driving rain, all these things that a lot of my competitors would get really phased by. And I suppose by default, it was just kind of normal for me and didn't mind it. Don't get me wrong, I never really enjoyed racing in those types of conditions, but it definitely didn't affect me nearly as much as those who I was racing against. And I definitely picked up on that and tried to use it to my advantage. So my childhood spent swimming and competitively going to competitions and then I guess a, a good stab at doing an ITU career in draft legal racing definitely set me up well with a proper swim background to come into long course racing and that was quickly a strength that I tried to, to capitalise on really. Um, and in my early years of racing it definitely was and it really allowed me to be in a, a fortunate position where I was often really at the pointy end of racing and that was something that I thrived upon to be honest and I really enjoyed that aggressive racing dynamic of being at the front trying to push on and stay at the front obviously because that was a fun thing to be doing and um, it was just something that I became known as 
has, I suppose. Um, somebody who's a good swimmer. And then that coupled with also spending a lot of time as a kid playing around on mountain bikes and being active on a bike, I was really comfortable riding. And I think when I moved over to do long course racing and spending you know, quite a bit of time on the bike as we have to do to train for it, I. Um, I just quickly grew to, to be a decent rider and that coupled with the swim gave me, you know, it was a pretty potent swim bike um, combination and it allowed me to be really active at the front of races and for the most part throughout my um, career, you know, I did not bad if I um, got to a race able to execute on those, on those good strengths. Retirement from triathlon is, it's a word and phrase that I was always hesitant to use. Retirement for me is quite a grand word and implies it's been a really strong career behind it. And I say that meaning I'm not not proud of what I achieved in the sport, don't get me wrong, I certainly am. I never for a minute when I was a kid expected to be able to travel the world, race for my country, win something like an Ironman for goodness sake. Some, you know, a place like Hawaii to me was just, you know, you might as well be in the moon. So I'm extremely proud of what I achieved, but I never really thought of it as something that I would have called a career as such, but that being said, I'm retired and it's finished and I, I don't regret it. I'm, I'm definitely at a point in life where I needed to think about what I was going to go on and do in life. I studied engineering out of university, usual sort of time skills in life in my early 20s. I have that degree but never used it. So I had certainly started thinking over the last year or two of racing about whether I could use that and what life might entail after racing. And I've seen it with lots of other athletes who they just drift on and on in the sport because they don't have anything else to do and I was worried and conscious about that being a trap that I was going to fall into as well. So being able to come into something like GTN, stay linked in with the industry, still have contacts with an awful lot of very close friends and people that I've spent a lot of time with over the years, that's, that's like a win-win for me. So I'm just really, really looking forward to getting stuck in, seeing what I can bring to GTN and um, being involved in triathlon. So what am I going to bring to GTN? As I've alluded to, I've had a pretty long career and I've been extremely fortunate to train and race all around the world to be fair. And that's exposed me to an awful lot of different athletes that I've trained with, raced against, but it's also allowed me to train under and with an awful lot of really knowledgeable coaches too. And um, I think all of the information I've learned from those athletes, coaches, some good, bad as well, um, tips, hints, tricks and things that I've picked up over the years. I think I'm, well I certainly hope I can bring a lot of that to the channel and share that with the viewers as well, which I'm, you know, I'm excited to do. And on that note, as a swimming background that I have, like I chatted about before, I'm, I'm really interested in all things to do with the water. Um, I think I've got a really good handle on form and open water technique. I'm happy to discuss that with anybody. By no means am I a coach, but it's definitely something that I'd feel happy and confident to chat about and really look forward to exploring a bit more detail about swim form and technique over time with the channel. Um, that also goes with the bike. I grew up riding a bike, really love training and being on my bike, if the weather's okay, mind you. Um, and I'm also really excited about all things tech, new bits of equipment. I used to love getting my bike ready for race day, just making sure it was in, you know, really good condition and, you know, something that I'd be proud to have hanging there on the rack in transition. So I hope over time I can spend more time looking into new bits and pieces that are coming to the triathlon market and things that we can talk about in a tech sort of um, side of things on the channel. And I'll definitely be looking forward to getting my teeth stuck into that. Well, that's been my story so far up into joining the team here at GTN. I'm really looking forward to helping bring a lot more content for you viewers to see. I hope you've enjoyed listening to my story so far. If you have, then please give the video a thumbs up and remember to click on the globe if you want to see all the other videos from the GTN channel. And if you want to see the first video that I filmed, which was how to run a sub 40 minute 10K, then please click here.